I'll introduce myself. I'm Mayor uh, Jim Delavope, and we're here to uh, launch the Valley Independent Sentinel. Uh, this is truly an exciting day. Uh, we're looking forward to it. It's uh, only appropriate that we're here in the automatic chambers and we look out the windows next door where the uh, old Sentinel was that closed on uh, Christmas Eve in 1995, I think. Uh, my uncle was uh, working there at the time and uh, was very devastating to uh, his family and a lot of families in the Valley. And uh, since then, there's been a big void in the uh, coverage that we ha have had here in Ansonia and throughout the Valley. And uh, I think the Valley Independent Sentinel will uh, fill that void and we're looking forward to it. As long as they're fair, now, we got to make sure we get that. Uh, I was talking to Eugene yesterday, and I uh, said we're getting along well now, but probably in two months I'll be chasing them down the street. <laughs> I'm Jamie Cohen. I'm the president of the Valley Community Foundation, and I am personally happy to be here to make a statement which many people in this audience and many people throughout the Valley probably thought we would never be able to make again, and that is that the Sentinel is back. <laughs> for those of you who wonder why this would matter, and for those who wonder why you only have to say the, word, the words, the sentinel, to any Valley resident who's over 30 years old in order to get some kind of a reaction either way. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you, just tell you the following. Over the course of my lifetime, there have been a number of significant events which people have characterized as having been devastating to the valley and its people, including the, the floods of 1955, the uh, BF sponge rubber uh, firebombing 20 years after that, among a number of other things. But in my opinion, the thing that was most, the one single event that was the most destructive to our sense of community was the Christmas Eve 1992, as it turns out. There, that's all right, you're close. Christmas Eve 1992, when the evening ser uh, sentinel was just unceremoniously and abruptly shut. Sir, what we all have to really respect is that journalism, is the opportunity to report factually, constantly, and with great intuition about what's going on in our community. I was alive in the 55 floods, and I remember my aunt living down here in Ansonia and having to come up to high ground in Derby to escape the waters. I remember my father at the age of four bringing me down to a couple of the buildings and showing me the water level, uh, which was the reason why we have all these dikes here and never to be repeated again. This particular project, uh, the online journalism project, uh, has taken seed and has done extremely well through its New Haven Independent, which has been around for a number of years now. And the Community Foundation is delighted to be able to expand within the greater 20-town region uh, this opportunity for the five towns. Uh, this is a fantastic day, and I, I'm just very pleased to be here and, uh, and have a chance to say a few words. but. You know, as I walked in, I had some remarks that I was going to make, and I still will say a few words, but I, I saw Judge Joe Flynn sitting there. And, you know, any mention of the Sentinel in the Valley isn't complete without mentioning Joe's father, Charles Flynn, uh, who was the editor of the Evening Sentinel. I don't know how many years, but he set a standard of journalism that rivaled any of the large papers around the country, and in integrity to go along with it. So, Eugene, I, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on you, <laughs> but you are, you are filling gigantic shoes in Charles H. Flynn, who you know, did so much for the community. Our United Way exists because of, of his father, and I believe the Chamber of Commerce is a regional organization as well. So let me start by recognizing that. Here. I do want to make a confession, though. I'm a reporter, and I don't believe what I read in the newspaper. <laughs> I just have to admit that. Okay, I love newspapers. I was written for them. I read them since I was a kid. But I just don't believe it because I've been reading this story these days and I just don't believe it. It's a bunch of newspapers. And the story is that local news is dying. I've been in this newspaper after newspaper. And here's why they say it's dying. They're saying, well, the only way you can have local news now 
is some greedy company from out of town somewhere has to buy your newspaper. And they have to give you a newspaper every morning with news about your town. And they have to take all the money they can out of it so their CEO in Chicago or Pennsylvania gets his own jet so he can go fly to some island. And then if things change a little bit, they can't make enough of that money to take out of your community, then they shut it down, no more newspaper, no more news. That's what I've been reading in newspaper after newspaper. The reason I think we're ne reading that is because they assign reporters to this beat who are like people who sit in funeral parlors all day and they're convinced that everyone's dying. And they don't realize that outside the funeral parlors some things are getting born. And in fact, what's happening in the Valley today is part of a national story of a great new kind of community journalism being born. Now, as you've heard today, there is some truth to that story in the newspaper. There was a daily newspaper that got shut down. But what's starting today is the way the new community journalism is But happening. aside from doing this weekly, we also have our website. And what we do is we publish articles that are written by the professional journalists at the New Haven Independent.org. We publish, we translate them into Spanish, and we publish them in our weekly newspaper. And I am here to announce that we will be doing the same thing with the Valley Independent Sentinel. We will be picking strategic articles, public, um, translating them into Spanish, and publishing them in La Voz Hispana, which will begin to circulate here in the You Valley. know, I have a lot of history with the, the Evening Sentinel. Matter of fact, uh, 49 years ago when I Got my first job was delivering the Sentinel, and it was 77 newspapers. <laughs> and I was a little, a little shrimp then, and it was, the bag was heavier than I was. But I had a lot of memorable times. And little by little, as young as I was, I started to read the paper. And, uh, you know, a little Italian boy from Italy, I'm still learning my English. And I, and I attribute to learning English was when I was delivering the the newspapers, because I would take it. And I, of course, what am I going to read? The comment section. Uh, for members of our family, there was a personal side to this, because my mother first started with the Sentinel when she graduated in 1926 as a reporter, and my father soon followed when he got out of Holy Cross. I, I asked him one time, well, how did you choose a career in Dublin? He said, Joe, I was coming back from school in Worcester on the trolley, and somebody told me that one of the reporters died, I went down and applied for the job. So <laughs> it was a wonderful cementing force which united us and brought us to uh, a common goal. And that's what's been lacking since we lost our uh, son and we lost our 